Yadi again. Welcome to the People's Paradise Podcast. What's going on? Whew. You know, initially I actually was recording this outside, but um, I had to stop it because I just it wasn't working. Signal was bad, but I'm here now. And now we are going live again right now. We're talking about the Grammys. We're talking about what's going on with the Grammys. And we're talking about um, who got snubbed, who won an award, who shouldn't have got an award. And we're just having a conversation right now. Who who won an award, who shouldn't have won an award. And, you know, things of that nature. So, if you don't know, if you don't know, you should know. Uh, a lot happened. You know, a lot happened. A lot happened last night. Uh... Some people won awards that shouldn't have won awards. Some people got an award. Some people got surprises. And um, you know, a lot of stuff happened. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go over. We're going to go over the people who did win. We're going to go over the people who did win. I'm going to give you my opinion about the people who won or I felt like shouldn't have won or you know things of that nature. Let's see. Pull up the pull up the list of people who are who are in the money right now. Get everything going. Hmm. It's actually kind of cute. You know, before I walked in here and started recording, this there actually was this really pretty black girl I was trying to talk to. I was trying to find her, but I, man, I, I just ended up losing her. Is this even the right? I'm looking. Is this even the right one? Hold on. Okay. Okay, hold on. And one, two, and three, and four. Ooh. So now we can talk about now we can talk about who. Now we can talk about who won, who didn't win, who should have won. And things of that nature. So, um, so get everything going. And by the way, to the people who listen right now on the podcast right now, if you want to comment and say something, I'll put a comment right now in the chat room and let you know what's going on. Tell you right now. Let's see. Hey, this is JT. Hey, this is this is JT. What's up? Okay, now let's do it. So, um, going off of what happened last night, there was a lot of people who lost Grammys, a lot of people who lost lost the award, who probably should have won an award, who didn't get awards. And I want to talk about it because I want to give my opinion about it. You know, I did I didn't watch the Grammys. I watched clips from the Grammys. I watched little clips of people getting their speeches and crying and stuff, telling their mama how proud they made them and telling all this all you know the whole little story shenanigans. And it's beautiful. I love it. Trust me. I love all that sappy shit. Trust me. I love it. I love it from the bottom of my heart. I love it, but I still like to talk about the the, the the dumb stuff. I still like to talk about the dumb stuff. I still like to talk about the people who won awards who shouldn't have got awards. You know, all of that. So I decided to go through and see, talk about certain things and see what's going on. Like, say for example, shout out to Adele. Adele won Grammy Award for Album of the Year. She won a Grammy Award for Album of the Year. Now, me personally. I think she deserved it. I listened to Adele's album last year. I listened to every single track I thought was complete, absolute, hell's inferno fire. I thought she was the best. I, when I heard her album, which is kind of weird because the album was released in November 20, 2015, so it technically shouldn't count. Well, if it's released at the end of the year, I guess I can understand because it counts. Most of the singles were being played in the following years. So I can understand it being uh, considered for next year, but... And that is kind of that is kind of odd that it that it is that it was a 2015 album winning 2017 awards, but that album won Grammy Album of the Year. Now, for the album of the year, now for the album of the years, the nominees for the nominees for this year, for the album of the year for 2017 were her album, Views by Drake, Purpose by Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber, Lemonade by Beyonce. And a sailor's guide to Earth, Stuart Jill Simpson. Now, 
initially, whenever I hear, whenever when I first read Sturg Jill Simpson's name, I've never heard of this dude before. When I first heard his name, I immediately thought of the Simpsons. I don't, I'm not familiar with who he is at all. Um, so I can't really speak on if he deserved to get album of the year. I know with Justin Bieber, I'll be honest with you, Justin Bieber's album was fire. I'll keep it all the way. Hey, D-Rock, was going on with you, fam? I'll keep it all the way 100 with you. I'm listening to Justin Bieber's album. Justin Bieber's album, Purpose, was fire. And I know as a, bla as a black man, I shouldn't be saying that. As a grown-ass man, I shouldn't admit to liking Justin Bieber. But I ain't even going to lie to you. The, the boy fire. The boy got some good hits. A couple of them songs, I ain't going to lie A couple of them songs, I was listening back to back and thinking like, damn, like, it's Justin Bieber that, is Justin Bieber the best R&B? It's weird when you live in a day and age where the best R&B artist is a white boy. Just think about that. The best R&B artist right now is a white boy. Shout out to Tariq Asala. What's going on with you? That's something strange to think about. The person who had the best R&B album of the year right now is a white boy. Now, granted, he didn't get a category for that. But I will say, when I listened to this album, I thought it was literally best album I, best album I had heard so far this year. That's just my personal opinion. Now... For album of the year, the other competitor was Views by Drake. I listened to Views by Drake, you know, illegally, of course. And I listened to every track. I just, me personally, I wasn't feeling it. There were a few songs on Views by Drake that I liked. You know, I do like the, the controller. I thought controller was overrated. I ain't catch on to it. I thought it was too... The problem with Drake, the problem with Views, the problem with the whole album in general is when I heard a Drake album... I initially thought that I initially thought that when I heard Drake was coming out with an album, I thought it was gonna be a rap album. Because I like Drake for his bars. I that whole reggae, sad singing, wanna be Charlie Wilson type shit he doing, I you know it's cool it's for the birds. I I, I tolerate that because I like it, but I really ain't feeling that. But I like Drake for his bars. I like Drake for when he's out there spitting bars. I like Drake when you see him on an album, he's spitting that fire shit. That it it just, it just, it wasn't fair with me. D Rock said it was a great album. There was just very, way better songs that came. Yeah, exactly. And me personally, I just, I wouldn't fear in it. Now, Dell's album, if out of the, out of the five song, out of the five albums that they had in the album of the year category, Adele 25, Views by Drake, Purpose by Justin Bieber, Savers Guide to Earth, Sturgeon Simpson, Lemonade by Beyonce. My personal opinion, if I had to name them from number one to number five, and which one had the best songs to me, it would have been number one, Justin Bieber Purpose, number two, Adele 25, and the other three I can't really speak on because I didn't listen to them. I never listen. I, I, no, Drake, well, I listened to Views. I didn't feel, I wasn't fucking with Views. But A Sailor's Guide to Earth by Sturgill Simpson. I don't even know who Sturgill Simpson, Sturgill, Sturgill Simpson. I don't even have an idea who that is. Like, to me, I don't even know who that nigga is. Like, when I hear Sturgill Simpson and A Sailor's Guide to Earth, I think of Sailor Moon and The Simpsons at the same time. Like, I don't, I've never heard of this guy before. And Lemonade, I feel bad to speak on Lemonade because... I didn't listen to Lemonade. I didn't listen. The only song I know about Lemonade off the only song I know off of the Lemonade album is that Slay, I Slay, I Slay, I Slay, I Slay. And it's a cool little, it's a, I don't even like that song. The only version of that, the only version of that song I like is the version that Beyonce performed with Bruno Mars at the Super Bowl last year. That version of the song was fire when they mixed the uptown funk beat with the slate with the uh, slate beat. It was like, I Slay, don't believe, just watch, I Slay. That shit was fire, bro. As far as as far as it being, I just I just I wouldn't feel this. So the reason why I'm bringing this up first, I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people felt that a lot of people felt that Beyonce got snubbed. A lot of people felt that Beyonce should have been the one on stage getting the album of the year. A lot of people felt that she should have won song of the year. A lot of people felt she should have won record of the year. I'm bringing up all those other categories because Adele won all four of the motherfuckers. Now, <laughs> I mean. And me personally, I don't think she got snubbed. It's just that the people decided what they wanted. The people decided what they liked. Most people fuck with Adele's music. And I can understand because Adele is an incredible artist. To me personally, when I heard it, when I heard it, when I, I don't, like I always say, if somebody's a star, because I'm the type of person, I stay up to date on music. I try to stay up to date on music. I try to stay up to date on what's going on in the world. So if I know so, if somebody's a star out there, somebody's out there really making waves in the music game, I'm going to find out about them. I'm going to hear their music at some point. I'm going to hear their songs at some point. Like Chance the Rapper, for example. I've always known who Chance the Rapper was since 2011. But 
I didn't really start paying attention to him until last year because he came out with that shit that if one more nigga try to try me, it's going to be some dread heading. I got to be quiet because they can hear me here. This, this ain't the library. This is actually like my college. But when he came out with that song, that's when I started pressing the ear to him because I was like, okay, he's starting to make waves now. He's starting to do his thing. With Beyonce, with Beyonce's songs off of Lemonade, I can't think of any of those songs being something that I was like, this is a good ass song. This is a good ass song. Everybody singing this song. This is a good song. I feel like it had one. I feel like her album had like one hot month because it was so controversial because she was talking about Jay Z cheating on her and shit like that. And she's performing that formation song at the Super Bowl. Like she had like one hot month. And after that, I don't remember anything else. I don't remember anything else important to me from that. I just don't. And, it, 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 and the one thing about Beyonce is. is Beyonce is already in legendary status. You know, I can hate on her as much as I want to. I can say this and that about her, but at the end of the day, Beyonce is already in legendary status. She's already in that legendary status to where she ain't got to keep producing new music. She can literally do like how Tina Turner does. Tina Turner ain't came out with no new music in God knows how long. This bitch has literally been touring for 35 years singing the same songs. For the last 34 years. Yes, she already in the family. Exactly. She could do like how Lauren Hill does. Lauren Hill is a talented musician. I think Lauren Hill was talented. Lauren Hill literally has made a career for the last 15 years off of performing the same damn songs from her first album that came out 17, 16 years ago. Like she when did, let me, when did that damn album come out? Let me look at that up. The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. When, when did that come out? The Miseducation of of Lauren Hill. Let me see when that album came out. That album came out in 1998. The Miseducation of Lauren Hill came out in 1998. Lauren Hill has literally been performing the same songs for almost 20 years, and people have been steadily going to her concerts. I like guess like it's just all cool. Me, I'd have said fuck it. I'd have been like, I ain't. Tr- I, I me, I'd have said fuck. I'd have been like, but you got to make some new songs at some point. You can't just go, you can't just have people come and sing the same song. And, and I, I guess I bring I bring up Lauren Hill in this scenario because to me Lauren Hill is still relatively young when you compare it to like a, a Tina Turner, when you compare it to like a Prince, when you compare it to like a Michael Jackson. All those people that I just named right now, they all kept making music all the way until they were like until they were all the way like in their like hella old. But Lauren Hill just keep making the same song, so I don't know. So, more of the story, album of the year, I think Adele won that fair and square. She won that fair and square. Now, the next one they had was, the next one they had was Best Music Video. The nominees for Best Music Video were, so Best Music Video. The Best Music Video nominees were, I'm going to right now. Formation by Beyonce, Gosh by Jamie, Up and Up and Up by Coldplay, River by Leon Bridges, Upside Down and Inside Out. Um, all of those, oh yeah, all, all of those I wasn't feeling. All of those, I, all of those I wasn't feeling. All of them, I, I listened to Formation once again. I listened to Formation. All those are the ones I didn't get to listen to, so I can't speak on if Upside Down or Inside Out deserved to win, or if Gosh deserved to win, or if Up and Up deserved to win, or River. Most of these is rock songs. I think I ain't never heard them before, so you know. Hey, right. let's see. I mean, what best rap song? I talked about this in the other one. Best rap song was 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 um how was was Drake Hot Line Bling. The competition he had against them for that were All the Way Up by French Montana and Remy Ma, Famous by Kanye West, and No Problem by Lil Wayne and Ultra Light Bean by Kanye West. Now, see, I ain't gonna lie to you. All of those songs to me are better than Hotline Bling. But then once again, the Grammys, the Grammys, I think, is really just based Oh, shit. The Grammys are really just based off of of the, the Grammys are really just based off of like whose song I played the most. Like there's there's really just based off of who got, whose song I played the most in the club or outside the club on radio airplay. And most of those songs that I just named, they didn't get played as much as Hotline Bling because you know Drake's on it. You know Drake 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 at that type of level of, of produce. Drake is at that type of level of music to where like he's at that type of level to where. 
he can make a song and it can probably be low key, not even that good, like maybe medium, okay, on a scale of one to ten, maybe like a six. And people will still fuck with it because they love his music. The people will still fuck with it because they love Drake. Girls will still listen to it because they love Drake. And it, so I understand that. But to me, I don't think he deserved that. I don't think he deserved best rap song. I think the person who deserved, I think who deserved best rap song, in my personal opinion, was from the people that they have on this list right here. It would be between Ultralight Beam by Kanye West. Or no problem by chance the rapper. And truthfully, only reason I say no problem is because no problem is a slap. Like it's a slap where I like it, but I don't think I don't think it's better than Ultralight Beam. And it's kind of funny because they got the same almost the same damn people on Ultralight Beam as they got on No Problem. I don't know if you ever listen to Ultralight Beam. That's the one where Kanye West is on there. He has like Kirk Franklin on there. He got Kirk Franklin, Jennifer Hudson, the choir. It's just like this whole beautiful thing. He got Chance on there, too. It's, like, it's a really beautiful record. So I think Ultralight Beam to the one that. Ultralight Beam jams. That's my shit. You know what I'm talking about. Ultralight Beam was a jams. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, best rap song. Let's see, best rap song. Best rap song was... Let's see. Oh, I just read that. Why am I, why am I reading over you? I'm tripping. I just read that. I'm just tripping. Let's see. Best rap song collaboration was Hotline Lean. What does that even mean? Rap song collaboration. Let me see. What, the, what were the other... What were the... What were the other ones? What were the other fucking competitors? What was the, what was the competition? Hotline Bling. Famous. Ultralight Bean. Broccoli. Freedom. I mean... So for best rap song, best rap slash song performance, it was Hotline Bling that won, but it was going up against Famous, Ultralight Beam, Broccoli, and Freedom by Beyonce and Kendrick Lamar. Now, see, out of all of those four, I've listened to all of them. I think Broccoli should have won. I think Broccoli should have won. Broccoli, Broccoli went hard in the fucking thing. Like Broccoli was pretty tight. Like that was my sh- Broccoli. For about a good smooth three months, I was playing broccoli. And yeah, DR, Drum should have won that. And the catch about Drum is, Drum is actually really talented. Like, I tell niggas, it's like, people be sleeping on how talented Drum is. Drum actually is a really talented musician. Drum actually knows how to produce music. He actually knows how to produce music. He actually can really sing. Like, I saw him when I think it was the Jimmy Kimmel, when he sung that live, that hit was so good. Yeah, when he sung it live, he can actually sing, sing. I ain't talking about like with the bumble rap skit scat shit. I'm talking about he actually can really sing like on some crooner Frank Sinatra type shit. Like he actually really do got talent. I think he's one of those type of people who I just want to see go far just because I like I like how he thinks. No, I don't think exactly. He's one of those type of people who I want to see go far because I think I think he'll really will change the game. Like I love I love seeing drama. I love seeing drama. Because he's a talented dude. I, th- I think Broccoli should have won the best rapper song performance. Now, Lil Yachty, you know, Lil Yachty, and I, I can't ignore him. I ain't a fan of Lil Yachty's music. I'm not a fan of it. I will say this out. This song, Broccoli, was the only song with Lil Yachty on it that I actually enjoyed. I wanted, I wanted to hear just change to stay relevant. Well, the, I think he's actually kind of doing that now, bro, because with drum, drum style of, you know, Drum, like I said, like I told you earlier, how Drum actually can really sing, like really classically sing. He's doing the style that he's doing right now because he knows it's popular. You know, that's the way to stay relevant. So he's already doing that right now. I don't really know. I don't really. He's kind of like, I look at him kind of like how I would look at like a, um, you know, Pitbull. You know, Pitbull is the dude. Um, he started off as like a rapper in Dirty South in Miami. He was back rapping with Dirty Trick Daddy when Trick Daddy was really, wasn't really nobody. Now he doing like the whole Universal Global EDM records and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I think he's kind of he's trying to like how Pitbull is doing. Have you listened to his album yet? Drums. I listened to his album. I kind of skimmed through the songs. I listened to Cash Machine. There was one song that stood out to me called Cash Machine. It's like my Cash Machine, dun, 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 my Cash Machine. I wish I could sing. It's like my Cash Machine. In a lot of ways, he sound he sound like a better sounding version of Fetty Wap. He 
He sounds like a better founder. Hey, let me tell y'all something. And by the way, let me just bring this up. Since people were saying, I remember like two years ago when Fetty Wap came out, everybody was going through that phase where they were saying, oh my God, where hip hop is going. Hip hop is going in the garbage right now. We're losing all the talent. There's no more. At Con 209, shout out to my niggas in Stockton. What's going on with you? When Fetty, when Fetty Wap came out, everybody was talking about there's no more talent in hip hop and all this other stuff. Nigga, have you seen Fetty Wap come out with a new hit since two years ago? Like, Fetty Wap literally hasn't had another hit since, since that song that he since. And he was popping, like, Fetty Wap was popping for you. I'm bringing up Fetty Wap because everybody always go through these phases where we always had this moment where they'll have, like, a one-hit wonder, like a Fetty Wap, like a Lil Yachty come out, and all the, the whole hip-hop community will literally lose their shit, blow their mind, and be like, oh, my God, the art's changing. We're getting rid of this, we're getting rid of this. It's like, bro, man, the art ain't changing. You can just see what happens. And, and like, I've said this on this Periscope before, when it comes, laughing like you can sing, you just got to find out where you just, you can sing. You just got to find where your voice is at. You can sing. Oh, sh bro, I'm trying to. I'm trying, I'm trying to. I'm trying to learn how to sing, you know. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say my singing for record. And shout out to that man like Jamak. What's going on with you, maybe? What's going on? But, like, so that's why, you know, so that's why what's up with your family. Tell me how that date went, by the way. But with Lil Yachty, that's why I'm not really tripping about Lil Yachty because I've seen a thousand Lil Yachty's. I've seen a thousand Fetty Wops. Just it is what it is. And I know I'm getting off topic from the Grammys right now, but I always want to touch on this. It's this weekend coming up. Ah, oh, shit. This is getting in the weekend, hopping in the bed. Nigga, nigga about to hit, that, hit up that Macy's and buy that special Calvin Klein cologne. Trying to smell like a wine breeze up there. But anyway, I think, I think with... Um, what was I going to say? Someone was going to say. The last time I talked to you, matter of fact, men like Jamak, on Saturday, I was listening to, before I got on the Periscope on um, last Saturday, I was listening to Louis Satchman. I don't know if y'all ever heard of Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong, he was a famous jazz player back in New Orleans. Really popular. They used to call him Satchmouth because he had a big ass mouth. And I'm bringing him, I'm bringing him up right now because when I was listening to him perform on stage and watch him, he was a great performer, talented performer. He was doing that same shit that y'all don't like, the same shit, like that mumble rap shit, but it was back then it was called scatting, like a But this nigga's literally doing this for a whole song. The song had lyrics. I looked at the, at G Man City was going on. The song had lyrics. I literally looked up the lyrics for the song. This nigga was doing the whole song. I was, and, and it was cool. I literally, I posted it on my Facebook and I said, I said, nigga, this was Young Thug before there was a Young Thug. So, music, I'm, I'm good. I'm doing good, my bro. How about yourself, man? So, music goes in phases. You know, so to the dudes who's tripping about the whole mumble rap thing, music goes in phases. This ain't no new shit. That mumble rap shit, it's, it's nothing new. Niggas have been doing mumble rap since 1930, 1945. Louis Satchmo, I'm telling y'all right now, Google Louis Satchmo and go on YouTube, look up Louis Satchmo, look at him perform. This nigga literally did a whole song that has lyrics. He just did the whole song. This nigga literally rapped like Courage a Cowardly Dog explaining the story for 45 minutes. Like, it's just, it's crazy to me. But they're making mumble rap more popular. That's the problem. They're making it okay. Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to tell you, bro. The mumble rap thing comes from that scatting thing. That's normal. That's, it's a normal thing. Like, it's just part of it. They're making it more number, but it's just a phase. Me personally, if you want to tell me what I think about hip hop, I think hip hop hip hop is about to die. I think what we gotta understand about music genres when it comes to rock. Like I saw one dude on, on one of the tweets that I retweeted on Twitter. It was one cat he got on here and he was like, "Bruh, I don't like how I don't like how on the Grammys they just focused on three music genres. Like there's so many more than just the three music genres. Nigga, do you know how many other genres of music there are in the world?" Do you know how many, like, it ain't that. I think hip-hop's the hot shit right now, but don't get it fucked up. R&B used to be the hot shit. R&B used to be the hot shit. There used to be a song, it's because of social media, my dude. Yeah, exactly. Uh, look, when you say it's because of social media, my dude, can you explain why you're saying that? I think, it's just what it is, what it is, it's the hot shit. I think with, what was I going to say? I think with, I think with hip, I think with hip-hop, I think hip-hop is about to die. I think hip hop is going through that phase where it's about to transform into a different art form, like how funk transformed into R&B and 
hip hop transformed from R and B into hip. Our hip hop became from funk music, just like jazz. I think it's transforming into a different thing. Now, if we're gonna still have the melody and the cadence that we took from the mumble rap thing, you know, hey, it's all cool with me. I don't care. If we take that, it is what it is. Cause some of that shit I like. D Rock said because you know, like ten years ago, for instance, West Coast had their own wave. West Coast, West Coast had their own. Well, yeah, they did. East Coast had their own wave too. And hip hop is unique in that sense because most music genres, when they have an area, most music genres last about twenty to thirty years. Most music genres last twenty to thirty years. So what happens is hip hop is unique in that sense to where it lasted longer than twenty and thirty. It's not actually twenty. It lasted longer than twenty and thirty years, and it it had its own movements on different sides. Mumble rap needs its own genre, not to be considered rap. That's what I'm saying. I think it might end up becoming... That's why there's so much number rap. Mmm, I see what you're saying now. You're saying that because of social media, because people trying to copy the new shit, that that's why everybody's trying to do the... That's why people... I see what you're saying now. Because that's what they're playing on the radio. That's the popular thing right now. I see what you're saying now. I can understand what you're saying. But arguably, just to play devil's advocate, you can also say that's how most music genres are. I think most music... That's making the money. But that's how most music genres are, bro. You got to think about that. Like, of course, right now, you're going to have a lot of people come out and do the mumble rap because that's what's popping. That's what's making sense. It's just like, it's, it's just like prime example, prime example. Give you a prime example of D-Rock. I'll give you a prime example. Do you remember 14, 15 years ago in hip hop where literally every nigga that came out to try to be the rapper from 2000, from the year 2000 to the year 2005? Do you remember when every single rapper that came out had an I Got Shot story? Do you remember that shit? Do you remember when every rapper from 2000 to 2004 had an I Got Shot story? 50 Cent had an I Got Shot story. The Game had an I Got Shot story. Lil Wayne came out in 1997, 1996. He's an exception. This nigga had I Got Shot. Lil Wayne shot himself. Remember that. Lil Wayne shot himself and actually rapped about it. He had to have a Got Shot story about he shot himself. This nigga literally had to have a I Got Shot story about he shot himself. I, that is just the most retarded thing in the world. I'm going to quote Jay-Z. I don't, I don't usually quote Jay-Z. I'm going to quote Jay-Z right now and say something he said that was so amazing. He said, y'all He said y'all get praises. It was something like, y'all get praises to the who got shot. I get praises to the shooter. Why y'all get, get, like, everybody literally had a I got shot story. So, it is something to be said about that, man. It is something to be said. It is something to be said about people following trends. It's just natural. It's just like in the 80s, like, there were so many rock bands that came out in the 80s and 70s because that was a popular thing. You know, I, I think in every, I think in my theory is, I think in every ethnic group, in every ethnic group in the United States, there's some type of art form or some type of, some type of art form that's popular for that particular ethnic group to do. P.S. off topic, you'll get more vacation with your future location on. My location ain't on? It's, oh, ain't it on? Usually it's on, but it's off. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Oh, my bad. Okay, tell you what, I'm going to put it back on. Hey, stay there. I'm going to put it back. I'm going to put it on. I didn't know it was off. Hold on. Okay, back again. Okay, back again. <clears throat> anyway, so what I was saying, so what I was saying was is what I was saying was is what was I saying? Oh yeah, so yeah, I think I think in every ethnic group, I think hey, shout out to Tamaka Kufordi was going on with you, man. Like Jamaica was out with you, man. And Hakan was going on. Okay, cool. So what I was saying was like in every ethnic group, I think with the, every ethnic group that you have, with the black African, whatever, and shout out to Black Charger. His name is Black Charger. That's a funny name. It's Sugar Hurry Ice, <laughs> Sugar Honey Ice Tea. <laughs> that is the fattest thing I've ever seen before. I think with all ethnic groups, with black people, with Mexican people, with white people, I think we all have some type of particular music genre that we're popular for making. I think we all have some type of music genre that's popular for that particular ethnic group to make. Hey, hey, what's going on with you? How you doing? Hey. 
I think what black people are obviously right now is hip hop. With the generation, two generations before us, it was probably it was probably R and B and jazz music. I think of white people it was grunge music, it was pop music, it was country music. Right now, the music that's popular for black people to make, that's influencing the young black people in our ethnic group right now, I'm talking about African Americans, is mumble rap music. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Because like I told y'all before, I'll get in my car and slap Young Thug every day. I'll get in my car and slap goddamn Drum every day. I just don't slap Lil Yachty, Rich Homie Kwan, Future, them niggas, I don't, I don't like this stuff. So this it is what it is. Sign them. Music strains like that, but like I, that's why I don't really get too caught up in like, what did you think about Tribe's performance? Tribe's performance, so I'm going to be all the way honest with you. From the Grammys last night, from the Grammys last night, Sugar Honey Ice Tea, from the Grammys last night. Is that, I got to ask, is this, is this a guy or a girl whose name is Sugar Honey Ice Tea? But I watched, I only watched Bruno Mars' performance. I watched Bruno Mars' performance, but I didn't watch Tribe's. I heard about Tribe, but I heard it was really good. I didn't, I'm a woman, honey. Hey, you never, hey, you never know. You never know. There are some sugar honey iced teas out there. I'll tell you that right now. But anyway, I, I didn't watch Tribes. I heard it was great. I heard it was excellent. Now you do know. I think, I, to be all the way honest with you, and I know, I know you're going to get mad at me for saying this. I'm going to be all the way honest with you. Off the top of my head, I really can't remember who was in Tribe Called Quest. I know the name. Like, I'm trying to think who was it. Was it that one? Wasn't it Tribe Called Quest who came out with that one song that, I just gotta have you. I just gotta have you. I tried to look the other way, but babe, you passed me by. Q Tip. Wasn't that Tribe Called Quest? Q Tip was Tribe Called, Tribe Called Quest, wasn't it? Maybe it was, maybe not. I don't know. No, you know what I think of when I hear Tribe Called Quest. Do y'all remember that episode of the Boondocks where Pimp's name Slipback came to the house and was talking to Granddad, and Granddad was trying to say his name. He said, "Hey, listen, Slipback. Hey, Zoom Skokie. He's like, "No, my name is Pimp Name Slipback. Yes, that's what I called you, Slipback." He said, "No, Pimp Name Slipback." Like a Tribe Called Quest, you say the whole thing. That was literally the first time I ever heard of a Tribe Called Quest. Was watching that episode of the Boondocks. And for Rondoli, thirty, what was going on with you? Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't see them. I watched Bruno Mars' performance of Prince. Y'all, y'all, who's both star? Was that what you meant? Welcome to the Periscope. I really don't know any of their songs, sadly. No, I, can, I can understand, bro. I'm the same. The only thing I can think of is that Q-Tip song that, I just gotta have you. That song slap. But I think with, with Bruno Mars' performance, I love Bruno Mars' performance. I love, and Arnella, what's going on with you? I love that they picked the perfect person to channel Prince. I think they picked the exact perfect performer for our generation to have to be Prince last night. Because I remember when Prince, I remember a time where Prince, when Prince was still alive, and y'all might not remember this, at the BET Awards about six years ago, they had trade. They did this thing where they honored Prince. You know how to do that thing at the BET Awards where they get a bunch of random performers and honor some performer who should have been honored a long time ago. So. They did the same thing, but they had print. They had Q-Tip song, Vibrant Thing. Is my, yeah, that song. I know that song. That's a vibrant thing. Dun, 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 such a vibrant thing. That's a great song. That's a good song. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's a great song. But they had this one time when Prince came on, and um, they had Trey songs. They had Trey songs uh, perform for Prince. And... It was just terrible. Like, Trey Songs, God bless Trey Songs. Right? God bless the brothers. Right? Trey Songs is a talented performer. He can sing his ass off. Well, he, he, what? he can't, he can, he can sing. He just can't sing really, really good. And he definitely don't sing good enough to sing Prince's music. So, it just, it just was bad all the way around. And he got on stage. Like, you could literally look in Prince's face and tell he was pissed off. Like, you know how Prince do. Prince, Prince got the, Prince got the, the best fuck you face in the industry. Prince had the best fuck you face at the whole music industry. He would look at you and just like, like he just, oh, that was, that was bad. But Bruno Mars, I think they picked the exact perfect person to channel Prince because Bruno Mars, he's talented, man. Bruno Mars is talented. He know what he's doing. He, he's great at what he, he's great at what he does, man. I love seeing, like, I love seeing Bruno Mars perform because Bruno Mars, He's a talented producer, talented, talented producer, dancer, artist. He knows how to do his hair. He knows he knows to wear glasses because his eyes are scary as hell. Like he's just a talented performer all the way around. I think.
to be honest with you, if I compare Bruno Mars to Beyonce, I think Bruno Mars is better. But, you know, of course, I got to be careful when I say that because somebody from the Beehive is going to listen to this podcast. And out of all the good shit that I said to the people, they're going to pick out that one sentence and have me go viral talking about how I don't know what I'm talking about, how I'm bashing Beyonce. You know, you know, it is what it is. And it, hey, it happens. But, um, what's I going to say? So, yeah. What a serious. I, I watched that. I think he did a good job challenging Prince. I think Bruno Mars is the next Prince that we have. Um, really, if I think, if I could, if I could name off the top people that we have right now as far as, far as talented people who are alive, like some like the younger generation, it probably would be Bruno Mars. It probably be Bruno Mars, Beck. Um. Ed Sheeran, I think Ed Sheeran is immensely talented. Um, kind of thing. I like the weekend. I like the weekend. I think we won't really appreciate how great the weekend is until like maybe twenty years in the future. But I like the weekend. I think the weekend's really great. He's a good singer. Ariana, Ariana Chavez, cómo estás? Cómo estás? Tú ya viste aquel Grammy ontem? But I think I think we I think we won't really appreciate how great the weekend was until until um, until he's gone. When he's gone, then we'll as see aside what's going on with you, baby. That's when we'll start really appreciating it. But right now we it's kind of we're having a hard time doing it. Um, he's talented. I think. Who are some other great performers? I'm trying to think. I think Taylor Swift is a good one. Taylor Swift makes some good music. I try. And I, only reason I don't listen to Taylor Swift more than I should, more than I want to, is because I'm scared that I'm going to like it too much. Because I talk shit about Taylor Swift. She is very detailed. Who is very detailed? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is good because she knows. Yeah, she's good because she knows how to produce beats. She knows at Puerto Rican 27, bro. You ain't got to let everybody know you Puerto Rican. I'm going to tell you, that's the one thing I don't like about uh, Latino people. Sometimes they they are so quick to let you know they're, where they're from. Maybe that, that's how black people need to be. We need to be proud to let you know. We need to be proud to let you know where the fuck we from. Black people, I want Drake Cuz, what's going on with you? Everybody who's black here, who from Mississippi, from Alabama, I want y'all to change y'all names and change y'all names and to from, are you in Cali? Hey, you in Cali? Shout out to somebody else from Cali. We're sitting in Cali. Damn that voice, though. That voice, do. Damn that voice, though. Remember when we remember when we had a conversation at DR, when we had a conversation about how niggas, how niggas we have our own uh nigga, we have our own version of Creole and Patois, where Drake Cuz just said that dude, that's nigga Patois. That's what I'm talking about. Nigga Patois, we out here at Reading. Ariana, Ariana Chavez is from Reading. So I'm gonna tell you something, the girl from Reading. When I was growing up, when I was going to school, I'm from Vallejo. Growing up, when we used to go, when we used to go on field trips from Vallejo to like Sonoma and uh Eureka and all that stuff. They told us a myth that, let me see your toes. <laughs> My toes? No, but they had a story, they had a myth that if you go to Reading, it gets so hot in Reading that you actually could take eggs and crack them on the hood of the car and cook them. Now, is that true? Rage, you sound like the Allstate guy. Rage, what's going on? You sound like the Allstate guy. <laughs> Bro, you know what's funny? You know what's funny about that? I'll... The only reason I don't, the only reason I don't like when people the only reason I don't like when people say I sound like that guy is because he's so much more tall. I'm six one. That nigga is like six not six seven six. He's something dramatic. He's something dramatic. He played an ex, ex basketball star in Love and Basketball. So I'm assuming he's something really tall. I just know when I look at him on the movie theater, he's hella tall. I was looking at him and think. I always look at that and think like, damn. I wish I I really skip. I really skipped out on a few inches. I'm six ten. See what I'm saying? Shit like that. There's one dude, if y'all go to my one of my podcasts, a student of knowledge, what was that with you, man? There's one podcast I did where um I interviewed this guy. I don't know if y'all watch. It was like, all right, what's up with you, Ronnie? What's up with you, family? There was one podcast I did like last August where I interviewed the voiceover actor from One Piece. He did the voice of this one guy in One Piece. The dude's voice was so fucking deep that it was messing up the podcast because it was like I was recorded through a phone. His shit was shattering. His voice was shattering the phone. Like, like, like he was literally shattering the phone. But dude was like, but the dude was like, he told me he's six eleven. Like, you you you've heard you've heard his voice before because he did One Piece. He did some other animation. I'm gonna say he liked One Piece. Shout out to all the nerds who liked One Piece in the building. 
niggas who had great taste in recreational television. I got really off topic. I was talking about the Grammys. I was talking about music. I got really off topic. Do a Batman voice. Ah, uh, Batman. <laughs> what is that? Laugh out loud. I don't know. I never tried. But there is a lot of energy like Matt Sasson, etc. But in summer... Oh, no, it's hot in Redding. Don't lie to me. It gets hot as hell in Redding. It's so hot. Trust me. It gets hot in Redding. It gets, it gets hot in Redding. Trust me. Let me tell you that. For those of y'all who don't know what we're talking about, she's from a city. She's from a small village in Northern California called Redding. I was fucking with it because I was saying about how they said how hot it was up there. Redding's one of the... You ever, you ever... To my man, Ronnie, to my man, D-Rock, y'all in y'all states, I forgot where y'all told me y'all. D-Rock, I remember you told me you were from Mississippi where the sundial it. Sundial. See, shit like that, just stuff like how she has to say that right there where the sundial is, that shows you how random where she's from. When you bring up stuff like that, that's where the Liberty Bell is at. You'd be like, what? Did I? That's, how random, that's how random where she is from. But you ever, you ever seen the windows? Everybody, everybody, wherever you grow up at, hell no, I'm in Texas, mate. I'm in Texas, mate. Oh, Texas, my bad. You're in Texas. I apologize. Hey, Curly Girl 26, what's going on? It's a city. Right, of course, it's a city. It's a village. It's a village. It's like it's like five. Pe- it's like five people there. It's a village by Chico. Yeah, she gonna say it's by. Ch- oh, it's by Chico. She's gonna say it's by Chico just to give it some type of credibility. Chico say there's a party. Everybody know about Chico. But anyway, got off topic. Got off topic. We was talking about we was talking about great music. That my, oh, Ronnie was from Muddy, Mississippi. Oh yeah, because because we had the whole conversation about gang affiliation and all that stuff down there. Yeah. Hi, hi, Niger. No shade to people in Mississippi, but F that. You should follow You should follow back. I don't know if you follow me yet. But I think we're... I think... What was I going to say? I was, I was getting lost in music, but... Oh, we were talking about music. We were talking about the grammar. We were talking about music. We were talking about music. So, I guess since I got more people on, I guess I can ask you this. So, all right, shout out. I want to ask all you this. Drake, Ariana, Curly Girl, D-Rock, Ronnie, Rusub, Privet. I want to ask you guys this. Adele, last night, she won Album of the Year, Grammy for Album of the Year. She also won our uh, Grammy for Record of the Year. She also won our Grammy for Song of the Year. Now, Beyonce was nominated in all those same categories, and she won none of them. Adele won of them. Won all of them. Do you think, I want to ask all of you guys, do you think Adele deserved to win all those awards for Album of the Year, for Song of the Year, for Record of the Year, and for Best Pop Vocal of the Year? Do you think she deserved to did, did do you think she deserved to win those or did Beyonce do it? Drake Kerr said Beyonce the shit. I like her. I, I ain't gonna lie. To you. I like how your name is Drake's Kerr. I'd smash her if she wasn't pregnant. Mm. She's smashable. She's smashable. I'll say that. She is smashable. A Yanka Kuyakova. Yanka Kuvoyakoka. Tis tis tisk. Fat pig Beyonce. <laughs> Why'd you gotta be a fat pig, man? She's pregnant. I think I got her a fat pig. Adela can go suck a dick. Uh, okay, now see, what I was saying earlier was, me personally, if you compare the album of the year to uh, Beyonce, I didn't listen to Lemonade, so I can't tell you. I mean, Ronnie said, I mean, who I am I to say who deserves something? I don't know how much work was put in. Adele find herself. Adele got a pretty face. Adele got a pretty face. I think Adele deserved to win album of the year. I do not understand. Say slowly. Oh, okay, I got you. Our voice. <laughs> Thank you. I think with Beyonce. I think Beyonce. I think Beyonce's album. I didn't listen to Beyonce's album. I only listened to Formation. But I don't think she. I don't think I don't think she deserved album of the year. Pretty face, but got Beyonce got a nice body. And uh, Ronnie said, but she has a had a year in music was dope. So I think that with, who had a year of music that was dope? You're talking about with Adele or Beyonce? Which one? And said a mod that 2015 was going on with you. Because with, I think Adele deserved to win album of the year. I think Adele's album was fire. I listened to Adele's album. I thought it was fire. I think it was one of the best albums that we had available then. To be real with you, I didn't listen to Beyonce's album. So it might, her album might be fire. Album, uh, Beyonce's album might be fire, and I just didn't listen to her just because I don't want to. I didn't want to listen to her talk about Jay Z cheating on her for fourteen songs. I didn't want to see that. D Rock said, "I've gotten older, level. You got to have something more than just a banging body." Yeah, you do. 
Hey, y'all, y'all still talking about how how fine Beyonce is? We all know Beyonce fine. We all know. We all grew up looking at Beyonce. We all so a lot of y'all. Quiet as kept, and I hate to be vulgar. A lot of y'all niggas jacked off to Beyonce and y'all tease. So trust me, we all know she's cool. Adele has a super cool personality. Adele's cool. Adele's a nice person. Now, what Adele did do last night that I didn't like, and I'm going to talk talk about this right now. What Adele did do that I thought was retarded and stupid was y'all might have heard about this. She she took the Grammy that she won for best album of the year and broke it in half to give half of it to Beyonce. That was the stupidest shit I have ever seen. And Lally Bo was up with you. That was the... And that was because you had the music game. Oh, yeah, because you had the baby. That kind of set her back. That was literally... That was literally the stupidest shit I have ever seen. Oh, your phone died. Oh, it came back to life. That's good. You came back to me. I feel so special now. Thank you, Ariana. Shit, that was like literally the stupidest shit I have ever seen a white woman do. I've that was literally the stupidest shit. You put in all that hard work. You spent hours in the studio. You spent hours in the studio. Oh yes, and I'm not living. Oh you where do you live at Ariana? You spent hours in the studio. You spent hours in the studio perfecting your voice, losing two or three pounds that nobody noticed you lost to look good in them dresses. You spent all that hard work just to get an award and break it in half because you want to feel sorry because you feel sorry because Beyonce didn't win shit. Fuck her. Fuck her. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I got to say that, but fuck her. Fuck her. Fuck her. At the end of the day, the best man won. Look, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When I get on this podcast, when I get on this Periscope right now, nigga, do you know why I'm talking to you guys right now? Do you know why I'm talking to you guys while recording the podcast right now? Do you know why I'm talking to you guys while we're recording the podcast and tweeting? Because there's a thousand of the niggas out right now doing the same thing, and I want to beat all of them. And if none of them niggas get to the top and I get to the top before them, you think I'm a, I'm a, if I get an award for like some type of speech award, like fucking Barry White Voice Award, I don't know, whatever they give me, you think I'm going to care about them niggas and break my award in half and get them? Fuck them. No. I don't give a fuck. No. No. And maybe it's because I'm competitive. I'm sorry. I'm just a competitive person. Are your chakras open? Ma'am, I grew up off of Naruto. Don't play with my emotions. No, my chakras aren't open. My chakras aren't open. I, I grew up off of Naruto. Trust me. They're not open. But I'm going to tell you, like, that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Like, that's stupid. This is so, that's so retarded to me. I don't like that. Like, that's... Ronnie said, as long as Kanye wasn't on the scene, Adele had nothing to worry about. I agree. Adele owned the shit you won. It's like that same thing. I'm going to tell you somebody else who did that same stupid shit two years ago to piss me off. Do y'all remember when Macklemore won, I think, was best hip-hop album of the year for, like, Oscars or the Grammys two years ago? And everybody was on Twitter talking about, oh, Kendrick Lamar should have won it. Kendrick Lamar should have won it. Kendrick Lamar should have won it. And this bitch ass... I got to watch my language. I get excited. This man got on Twitter and said, man, y'all right. Kendrick Lamar should have won. He deserved the album. He deserved this. The reason I don't like when people do that is because when you say that, when you say I didn't deserve this, there is 30 million people who listen to you. There are 30 million people who listen to you who have your music in their iPhones and their Samsung Galaxies right now. Who've been telling people for the last five fucking years, man, Macklemore's the truth. Macklemore's the best. Macklemore's this and that. You just shitted on all your fans and made them all look stupid. Do you know how many of your fans argue with other niggas talking about, oh man, Macklemore better than Kendrick Lamar? Macklemore better than Kendrick Lamar? Now, personally, do I think Macklemore better than Kendrick Lamar? Fuck no. But at the same time, I know he has a lot of fans who do. That's how he got to the top. So you don't shit on your fans like that. I just. Look, let me tell you something. I'm a humble person. Y'all got to y'all who've been talking to me for a while. Y'all know I'm a humble person. I'm a nice guy. I speak my mind. I speak fairly. I I I do. I try to do right by people. But I'm a competitive person. I don't see the reason for you to. I don't see the reason for you to be petty. I just don't see the reason for you to be petty. Like the Macklemore and shit. Oh yeah, yeah, he ain't. But we can get into Macklemore is highly overrated. Let me just say that right now. But I'm still saying at the same time, don't be don't be fucking. Don't be more humble than needed. Don't be more humble. Know your family life, etc. Know your family life, etc. Like, don't be more humble than needed. Shit ain't necessary. Like, that shit just... People's egos get... People's egos get in the way. Exactly. People's egos get in the way. People's egos get in the way, and it's just... I don't know, man. I... So, that was the only thing I... That was the only thing I got mad at. I got mad at Adele Wood about. Because I was like... 
I got mad at her, like, as I understand, I understand she sees Beyonce as like, she, Adele sees Beyonce like how I see Charlemagne the God. She sees Beyonce like how I see a, a Kevin Hart or a Paul Moody, like, as, oh my God, this is the best, this is the best, this is the, the greatest, the goddess, the, the goddess, the muse of music, the greatest of, of all the artists that brought us. Real Manuel, and I did, Real Manuel H, what's going on with you, Real Manuel, what's going on? I understand that, I understand that completely, it's cool. By all means, it is nothing wrong, it ain't nothing wrong with that. But that's dumb. Yeah, I understand why it's dumb. It, the only re- the, I, It's not really dumb. The only reason why it kind of looks strange to me a little bit is because they're only about four to five years in age difference. That's the only reason it looks strange to me. Your voice is awesome. Thank you, bro. I really appreciate that. I see the camera. Are you a photographer? But that, they're only like four or five years in age difference. But if you're talking about greatness, if you're talking about producing greatness and producing great art, then I can understand why she said that. Because she's got an album of the year with every album she's put out. You talking about Beyonce? Well, Beyonce, see, now that it's just dumb. Well, Beyonce is kind of hard to see what Beyonce. Yeah, I'm a photographer. Yep, I knew it. Cool, bro. We're not, we're not meet to do business. No Adele. Oh, no Adele. Okay, well, see, then, even then, what does your voice sound like when you sing? My voice does not sound good when I. I you know, if I try to. I think I'm one day. One day. I'm gonna start really singing because there is a certain genre of music that I do like to sing, but the problem is with the mo- with that genre of music, my voice is too deep for me to kind of sing it. It's called samba and pagoshi. But I don't know. I mean, my thing is, if you're great, if you're talented, man, let your art, let your greatness speak for itself. Region over is going on with you. Let your greatness speak for itself. You're talented, man. You're a talented spit some bars. I'm gonna start spit later on. You you have greatness. You're a talented person. You got all of that. Like, why you gotta fucking be humble? To, I don't know. I just let me tell you something. In a year from now, let me go on stage and get Grammy Award for the best podcaster, best broadcaster, best periscope, or whatever that. Nigga, trust me. No one didn't do it. Let me try. Let me tell me. As soon as I walk on that stage and they give me my award, I'm gonna say thank you to my mama. I'm gonna thank God. I'm gonna thank everybody. I'm gonna, even even though, even though I'm kind of lightweight, somewhat atheist, I'm still gonna thank God. I'm gonna thank my mom. I'm gonna thank my daddy for making me. I'm gonna thank my grandma if God bless her to live for another year. I'm gonna thank my hamster, all of that stuff. But I'm gonna talk some shit. I'm gonna talk some shit. Everyone doesn't need to be conger. What do you mean, Larry? Everybody, does, everyone doesn't need to be cocky. What's up with the rapper? Hey, what's up with the rapper? But see how Kanye West is. I'm gonna tell you something. First off. Kanye West is an extreme level of arrogance that I don't like sometimes, but you got to respect because at the end of the day, we all went to high school. We all went to high school. Drake Carroll went to high school. Ariana went to high school. We all went to school. We all know somebody who would always tell everybody they were the shit at something. They were the best at something. Them niggas weren't even medium level good. We all know somebody like that. Everybody know that one dude who you and your cousin, when y'all were going to the park in the hood, y'all would go play basketball. It'd always be that one nigga who think he can dunk on everybody, who think he can shoot better than everybody. This nigga, you sound like you said something wrong with being humble. Honestly, and, and, he couldn't, and he, couldn't do, he couldn't do it at all. He was terrible at it. I think with Kanye West, I think with Kanye West, what I respect about him is, it's great to be humble. Great to be humble. Beautiful thing. What I respect about Kanye West is that nine times that it, that Eight times out of ten, Kanye West talks shit and backs it up. Kanye West talks his shit and he will back it up. Kanye West will say he's the best rapper. At the end of the day, do I think he's... For real, Kanye West needs help for real something wrong with him. I'm going to get to that part about him too. I think, even though... Do I think he's the best rapper in the world? No. But I, do I think he's in that conversation? Yes. I respect Kanye for tapping Kim Kardashian. Everybody tap Kim Kardashian, bro. But... He overrated to me, for real. Bro, he's talented, bro. I don't think he's overrated. I don't think he's overrated. I think Kanye West is on the same level as a Bruno Mars. School to four was going on with you. As far as like creativity, as far as greatness and pro, I think he's going to, I think he's on a great level, man. Now, I'm gonna tell you now, I will tell you this. The way that he raps, the way that he raps, as far as his style and flow, I think his flow is very is very average. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you this. I think his flow is very average. But his lyrics, his beats ability, his, be- his ability with making beats, his talent with designing. Well, you know, the, you know what? I'll, I'll be real with you. Listen, I'll, I'll be real with you. 
And Kanye, if you listen to this, I love you to death. You're my boy. You know, I love you. You're my family. You you cool. I've been listening to you since I was a kid. Nigga, you are a terrible clothing designer. You know, and I and I hope one of my I hope one of my fans tag you in this, but you are nigga, you are a terrible clothing designer. Your clothes are terrible. Nigga. You literally, literally, it looks like when you design clothes, it literally looks like you went to the Salvation Army and just grabbed a bunch of shit from a bin. Like it, it just looks terrible all the way around. Becky Flowers, hey, see, this is the girl from London. I ain't seen you in a while. How you doing? So I'm sorry. That's the one area that Kanye West falls short on. He nigga is a terrible clothing designer. That that shit. God gives us all gifts. God gives us all gifts, nigga. That is not yours. Ronnie said he lost his shit after he made them homeless clothes and his music okay. Not some shit you play all day. Yeah, like, it just, it don't, it, 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 he made that wrong. Now, Ronnie also brought up, he said he thinks something's wrong with Kanye West. I said, I did a Periscope four or five months ago where I said, I honestly think the Yeezys are overrated. What do you think about them? It depends what, yeah. Do I think the Yeezys are overrated? The bright, when I think of the Yeezys, I automatically think of the bright red ones. The Jordans are overrated. Jordans are overrated. But then they, bro, it's, I'll be real with you. It's been a long time since I saw a shoe that I really was like, oh my God, this is a nice ass shoe. Like, it's been a long, I can't think of any, sh I'm going to tell you the last time I saw a shoe that I was really impressed of was when I was four years old and my mom bought me them little light up ass Nikes that when you would walk, they would glow and shit. That was the last time I saw a shoe and I was like, oh my God, it's so cool. But as an adult, I can't think of any shoes I saw and was like, bro, this the shit. Like, I just, I can't, I can't think of any. Not Jordans, not Jordans, not convert, not Creative Rex. I used to love Creative Rex though. The Creative Rex was a shit. Like I used to love Creatives, but I don't. I can't think of any shoes I really like. But the Yeezys, the red Yeezys, I think were cool. The red, like the really bright red ones. That's the only ones I could think of. But they, they were cool, but they wasn't all that. Sean seventeen thirty eight. Like they, they live to me most. Let me, hold on, let me let me hold on, let me let me actually just type in Yeezys right now because I got my laptop open right now. Let's just type in Yeezys. Yeezys at Boat Clock. What's going on with you? Welcome to the podcast. How you doing? Yeah, looking at it right now. Season three, season fours. Yeah, these shoes are ugly, bro. Like, yeah, oh, these shoes are ugly, man. These shoes are ugly, man. Like, look, they just look weird. Like, they look like they may do your voice as deep as hell. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. These shoes, I'm looking at the Yeezys right now. These shoes are ugly. They, they look like, he looks like he made these shoes from pajamas. Like, they just look ugly. Like, I, I, it ain't nothing special about him. So, like, terrible clothing designer, great boot, great beat producer. He makes great music videos. He he has a good, he makes good, he has a, he, yeah, he makes great music videos. Except for that one that he did with Kim Kardashian. But, they just, besides that one, I'm so mad, man, I had to work, so I missed all of it. You serious? You missed all of what? But that's all of what. But so, I think he's a great music producer. I think he writes amazing lyrics. I think he does gr the Grammys. Oh yeah, this I, bro. I didn't even watch the Grammys. I just watched the clips. And I read some of the reviews and read some of the stuff. Have you heard of the new vibration shift? What's the new vibration shift? Can you explain to me what that is? The new vibration shift. But he's telling the faded video with with Tayana Taylor. That was a good video. That was a good video. The only thing I didn't like about the faded video with Tiana Taylor was at the end where it ended with the sheep around them and she had like the lion face paint and her dude, the dude, the dude she was with, he had like the, I, I didn't like that part because I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. Like I didn't know if they were trying to say like some type of metaphor to being a sheep, uh, being a lion surrounded by sheep or something like that. Like I didn't, I didn't get what that meant. And that's the only thing I don't like. That's the only thing I don't like about rappers like Kanye West is, you know, God bless, God bless, God, Lord bless his heart, Lord bless his heart. He's a good guy. His heart be in the right place sometimes. But I hate, a lot of artists do this. Hip-hop artists, painters, they all do this shit. I hate when they do some shit, like they give you some type of form of art and it's like the randomest shit in the world. It don't make any sense at all. And when you tell them, when somebody says, what does this mean? 
they go behind the guise of, well, I don't have to explain it because it's art. The art explains itself. Um, the arts and that. Like I, I hate, I hate esoteric art. I cannot stand esoteric art. ADZB was going on with you. I can't stand art that I really got to look at and try to really figure out what the fuck is going on. Like, what is this? That pisses me off. Like, nigga, you like, especially with, especially with, especially with rappers, because nigga, you're presenting this to me with the expectation that I'm going to understand this and like this. Ariana Chavez said, it's kind of hard. We are moving to the, what's up, bro? What's up with you, man? Welcome to the podcast. How you doing? We're moving to the Aquarius age stuff. Everything comes back around. Oh, yeah, I know about that astrology stuff. Yeah, Aquarius age, we're moving to the age where stuff is getting more weirder and stuff like that. But artists like Kanye West, I don't like when he does that. Now, going back to the Grammys, going back to the Grammys, and Tim Oaks, what's going on? Kanye West video with Rihanna, Chris Boomish, and all of them. I didn't see that video. I saw the I saw the picture, the the pan- panoramic view of the picture with him and all those people in the bed with Ray J, all the motherfuckers. And I just want to tell you right now, Kim Kardashian is a different type of wife. Because had I'd have been his wife and he'd have made some shit like that with me and then some nigga I fucked, I ain't proud that I fucked in the video, I would have divorced him. That's just my personal opinion. Now, I want to get the chance to rap it because, yeah, I was so, bro, bro, we, Ronnie, listen, Ronnie, Ronnie, let me tell you something, Ronnie. We was all fucking confused. Everybody was confused. I was confused. The nigga, nigga, the nigga directing the video. You talking about you was the nigga directing the video was confused. Probably the nigga who was directing the video was probably like, "What the fuck does this mean?" Like, it is, Richard, you can absorb if you have chakra and mana open. I'm going, Ariana. I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say you're a spiritualist. Now, the reason why I want to get the chance to rapper is because Chance the rapper really shine because he won. Let me see what he won. What did he let me go back? Because he won he won on he won best rap. He won a lot of ones that I want to talk about. And I want to give him credit because let me go to it right now. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna pull up the list. Because I have I have the list of the Grammy Grammys right here. But I want to give him I want to give Chance the Rapper a light of shine because he won best artist of the year. He won best new artist of the year. He won best new artist of the year. Now that term out of touch one was going on with you. Now that term best new artist of the year, I've always kind of looked at that and thought it was kind of stupid because nine times out of ten, when they, a person who wins best new artist never really is the best new art. It ain't really a new artist. Now Chance the Rapper been around. He been rapping since 2011, so the nigga ain't a new artist. It's just he's new to white people. Now. Ain't that weird? Hold on, let me just say this. Ain't that weird how, like, in, and once again, this isn't going to be a race-based podcast, but ain't that weird how, like, in the black community, we all, why weren't you, Barry, why weren't you, why weren't you at the Grammys, bro? Why weren't you at the Grammys? But I was say, ain't that weird how, like, in the black community, in the African-American community, in the Latin community, in the Asian community, we all have celebrities who we've known of since we were, like, kids, but who didn't get famous since, like, maybe three or four years ago? Like how with Kevin Hart, for example. Kevin Hart really didn't start getting famous to where everybody knew him to about 2011, 2010. When Seriously Funny came out, when Seriously Funny came out, that's what kind of, make sure it's light though, so there's many, many ways it can sound good. Yeah, when 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 um, when um Seriously Funny came out, that's what launched Kevin Hart to that level to where white people knew him. I've known who Kevin Hart was since, since 2003. I watched, because in 2003... He's a fifteen year he's a fifteen year overnight sensation. Exactly. Cause I remember he matter of fact, I've known him since I've known him since two thousand three. Most black people have known him since two thousand two because that's when Paper Soldiers came out. That movie with Paper Soldiers with Damon Dash and Stacey Dash and all them niggas. And even then, you know, so I've known who he was since then. I knew who he was by seeing Soul Plane. I watched him in Soul Plane. I didn't even know he was a I didn't even know he was a comedian. I watched him in Soul Plane. I personally like Soul Plane, and I know Sunshine Shop was going on with you. I know a lot of y'all niggas is gonna roast me about this, but I actually did enjoy Soul Plane. I thought it was pretty cool as a kid. I just thought it was cool. I didn't see him on stage until two years later. I think in two thousand, I went to Axel. So. I went to Axel. So. I am intrigued. I went to Axel. So. I am intrigued. And when I saw him on stage as a comedian, I was like, "This dude actually pretty funny." I actually liked him. Like I remember watching him and thinking, "This dude's actually funny." I like him, but. Is we're seeing like in our community, this dude was literally popular for almost fifteen years in our community, but he didn't get to that mainstream level until. But you know, then I'm. But then also, you got to wonder too, is 
maybe it doesn't really matter if you do get to that mainstream white level because if you pop it with the black one thing what we're seeing more of nowadays is is nowadays if you are popular with black people nowadays especially with hip-hop you're going to be popular with white people now there was a time where if you were a hip-hop artist only black people really knew who you were but now like say for example if you 21 savage if you young thug if you Lil yachty they have diverse fans now like they have fans in europe they have fans in norway they have fans at pute oh thank you they have fans in everywhere so now it's a little bit different now it's more diverse Versus back in the day, Villa 916 was old, you man. I ain't seen you in a minute. Versus back in the 1980s, like, prime example, prime example. Did nobody know who the fuck E40 was besides niggas? Did nobody know who E40 was? Did nobody know who Silly Cell was? Did nobody know who, um, goddamn, um, UGK was besides niggas? You just have to have trust in what happened and not to worry. Can you explain what we just, what you're talking about, Ariana? I'm kind of lost what you mean. So, it is what it is. But, to touch on Chance the Rapper, the reason why I wanted to touch on Chance was because he won Best Rap Album. He won Best New Artist. His album was dope. I like Chance's album. Now, the only thing I don't like about, as, as a rapper, I like Chance the Rapper as an artist. The only thing I don't like about Chance is Chance got good lyrics. He got great lyrics, but he does his shit with that mumble rap, so you really got to pay attention to what he's saying to understand and get the whole message. Out of touch once said, I respect Tyler Sperry because he crossed over, but he hasn't forgot his core audience. Some forget. He had Loda Fork, what's going on with you? Loda, how you doing? Tyler Perry never forgot his core audience. And to some extent, I don't like... Uh, I like Tyler Perry. I love the Medea films. I love all that stuff. But at the same time with the Tyler Perry, bro, that Medea shit get played out, bro. I'm getting tired of seeing Medea as an astronaut. Medea goes to Mars. Medea works in a cow factory. Like, I'm tired of seeing all the Medea films. I, I'm just, I'm tired of that. But with Chance, what I like about Chance is, is that I'm responding to something you'll see 10 seconds later. Okay. Okay. But with Chance, I like Chance because with Chance, I like his lyrics. Like I said, I, I love his lyrics. But with Chance, the problem with Chance the rapper is, like I said, is because he does the mumble rap. And he does it well. He does the mumble rap well. But when he does it, he does it so fast. You you really gotta pay attention to hear what the fuck he's saying to get to like. But he got he got good bars. He got the, the dude got bars. He got he has bars, but you really gotta pay attention to what he's saying to really catch the bars. Like I remember in that ultra like meme song he did with Kanye West. That nigga said he said that nigga says he just. I would have touched one going to say this nigga gonna write Medea goes to Mars will be dope though. Man, forget you, man. Okay. We're just trying to encourage the bullshit. But uh Chance the Rapper, he he said, he said, I know my mech, I know my ex stare, I know my ex man staring back at me like a pillar of salt. Nigga said, my ex staring back at me like a pillar of salt. You gotta know your Bible to understand that, bro. Do you understand that? You gotta understand your Bible to get that one. So he he talented. I like and I like seeing I like seeing him win because I know for I know for a fact the Chance the Rapper came up the hard way. You know, Chance the Rapper came up through hard work. He did his thing, and I respect seeing him. I respect him. Now, the people that he had competing with him for Best Rap Album, to get to that, for the Grammys, the people he was going up against for Best Rap Album in the Grammys was, it was, um, go to the nominees, Best Rap Album nominees. This is a God dream. This is everything. He was going up against The Life of Pablo by Kanye West. The anonymous nobody. And the fact that he only he's streaming the only album is dope too. Oh yeah, that's amazing. Major Key by DJ Coward. Blank Face by Schoolboy Q. Views by Drake. Okay, so they lost soul to be real with you. Y'all, once again, y'all are probably going to get mad at me right now. I have never listened to a De La Soul song. I have heard of him since I was a kid, but I've never listened to a song by him. I can't really speak if that was a great album. Schoolboy Q. I've listened to Schoolboy Q before. I don't remember him saying anything that really caught my ear, so I, I needless to say, I never listened to his album. Major of Key by Schoolboy Q. Schoolboy Q, he run with Kendrick Lamar's crew. He run with uh, J-Rock's Q. Major key by DJ Khaled. I know who DJ Khaled is, of course. I think DJ Khaled's whole movement, per se, is overrated. Okay, cool. No, the other dude, De La Soul. De La Soul, he's like this... 
They are souls like a. I, I don't know. I just I've, I've always heard of him. I don't really know who he is. De La Soul. He's like a. I don't know. He's I don't I don't know. Cause I've never listened to him. I just I've always heard of him. Like I've always heard of him, but I don't. I've never listened to him. Like I don't know. Mm. Mm. Oh, my periscope stopped. 